Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's live stream where we show you some of the best models available on the UK market today in many different scales. Today we're looking at the double O gauge Hornby LMS Princess Coronation in both its streamlined and de-streamlined forms as well. I'll be covering some of the history of these iconic locomotives, giving you some really in-depth details of how the models are fitted and can be operated too. If you've got any questions regarding the coronations, please put them in the chat and I'll be answering them out throughout the stream. However, do take a look at these as there's quite some different liveries. There's quite some different body styles as well. You're already most likely seeing some of your favourites on the table in front of me. But let's have a little bit of a look at the history. And as always, we've got to go back a little bit further than the start of the Princess Coronations themselves. So we're looking at the London Midland Scottish Railway in the 1930s. William Stanier had introduced his Princess Royal locomotives, the first Pacific to be used on the LMS, transformed services along the West Coast Main Line. But with the rivalry against the LNER hotting up, the LMS wanted to introduce a brand new non-stop service from London to Glasgow called the Coronation Scott. William Stanier, the locomotive's designer, proposed to build five more of the Princess Royals. However, some members of the team thought that a larger, more powerful, faster locomotive really was needed, especially on the northern sections of the West Coast Main Line, to handle those steep Cumbrian hills and the banks heading into Scotland. So this resulted in the Princess Coronation, or very nearly did. The design was pretty much ready when Envious I started looking at the A4 Pacifics of the London Northeastern Railway. With their streamlining, they were really capturing the imagination of the public and the LNER was pulling ahead in the rivalry between the two companies. So the LMS's marketing team really wanted streamlined locomotives as well. And the first were built with this streamlining. Now, William Stanier actually wasn't a fan. He could fully understand the marketing side of the streamlining. And it did have, they say it had improvements in running capabilities once the locomotives got over 80 miles an hour. But his design was the locomotive we see here. He's actually quoted as saying something similar as, we'll build them their streamliners, but I want five proper ones as well. And whilst the first locomotives entered traffic in the streamlined condition, he did build five extra ones in the condition we see here without the streamlining. So the locomotives entered service in 1937. The initial numbers, they built about, I believe it's 10 originally, and then five of the standard style locomotives too. The first ones were named after various royals and indeed the coronation of King George VI in 1937 was commemorated by the original member of the class being numbered 6220 coronation. And then various locomotives were named after duchesses as well. However, with more locomotives being built with streamlined casing, they quickly ran out of duchess name, duchesses to name them after. So locomotives were then co commemorating cities on and off the LMS network. We have City of Edinburgh and City of Salford here to show that off. Coming into the wartime, the locomotives are proving re really reliable with a mix of streamlined and non-streamlined locomotives in service. They were hugely powerful. They were absolutely great at the job they'd been designed for. In fact, when Coronation was built, it was the most powerful locomotive in Britain, which was superseded a couple of years later. But at the time, it did hold that record. But the one problem they had was the streamline in itself. It was an absolute pain to fix them, especially during wartime, when they couldn't run quite as fast due to a lot less track maintenance. The benefits of the streamlining weren't really there. They didn't need to market the trains as they were running them purely for moving troops and sort of standard services around the country. So the streamlining was authorised to be removed and the last streamlining was taken off in 1949. So there were some improvements and Upwell and Onwards has already pointed those out. The smoke deflectors on the locomotives were added at a later date to help the drafting of the smoke come through. The double chimney was designed that helped as well that was quickly fitted to the locomotives. 
But duchesses were still being built until 1948. There was a slightly different design with the final two, the first of which commemorated William Stanier by being named after him. But the final locomotive of the 38 Princess Coronations was number 46257, City of Salford. You'll see some of the differences there with the different style cab and the really modern technology innovation of the time, which was roller bearings on the rear pony and the tender, which you just didn't see that back in the late 1940s. It's something very common now, but this really was an innovative machine showing the developments of the locomotive in the 11 years since the construction of the original locos. 1950s, they were still running. Most of them ended up in the BR blue, but every single member of the class carried the standard BR green throughout the mid 1950s. They were immediately successful again, still running on the main expresses from London, Euston to Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham, and over the hills to Glasgow. However, this was to be their downfall. With electrification coming in from London up until up to the West Midlands and the northwest of England, they really fell out of favour, especially with the Class 40 diesels that had come in to haul the services north from Clue, from Crewe to Glasgow too. They didn't really have another job. They were built to be the perfect express locomotive for handling trains on the West Coast Main Line. And as soon as other locomotives came in to replace them, they were very quickly withdrawn. In 1963, they were still at the front of a lot of services on the West Coast Main Line. By the end of 1964, they were all gone, apart from three. Three locomotives have been preserved. There is 6229, Duchess of Hamilton, which I have a model of here, saved in the National Railway Museum in York. There is 46235, City of Birmingham, appropriately located in the Birmingham Science Museum. And also 6233, Duchess of Sutherland, which you can still see running on the main line today. It's fully mainline certified and has headed into some quite unusual places for a duchess, including the former rivalries of the Great Western region and the Eastern region. So you can really see that off field. Anyway, let's take a bit of a closer look at the model. And I've separated this up for you. This is one of the latest releases, which is City of Salford in the BR Brunswick Green. And you can see that here on the screen, just point out some of the details that you can see there too. And I'll set it up so I can give it a, give it a spin for you. One of, the de one of the main reasons I've separated this up is so you can see the cab detail that's contained in here. I think this has got to be one of the best, if not the best that I've seen in a big express locomotive such as this. Look at that, you've got everything there. You've got the full regulator, you've got the firebox doors, you've got all the gauges, the ejector gauge in there, the speedometer to the AWS system. You've got the full lot in there. You've got all the details and bringing it round again, Hornby have tooled up many different variations for these locomotives. The main difference being the streamlined casing and the unstreamlined versions. But this being one of the duchesses designed by Ivert instead of Stania does have developments, including those roller bearings, the smoke deflectors and double chimney that you can see up the front. But taking a look at some of the models that are in front of me here, all of these are available right now. And Gareth, yes, they do do the LMS locomotive in the non-streamlined condition. I've got that right in the middle. Here, that is the LMS black livery that was carried just after the Second World War. So 1945 into the late 1940s with the straw lining. We've got the streamlined locomotives in both liveries, both main liveries that they carried, the maroon and the coronation blue as well. They're available right now. And this model is the locomotive that is preserved in streamlined condition in the National Railway Museum. Into the 1950s, we have the condition of one of the X-Streamline locomotives with the sloping front there for, the, for where the streamline casing was. That's in the BR Caledonian blue livery from the early 1950s. And as we've touched on a couple of times, one of the final colour schemes is the BR green with the lake crest. Ideal for you guys who are modelling the transition over from steam to diesel and electric on the West Coast main line. 
As you'd expect with Hornby, you get some great details in the detailing pack. You've got the brake rigging in there, an NEM coupling, vacuum brake pipe for the front, but also an extra replacement wheel set. The wheel set on the rear pony truck there is actually flangeless to allow it to go around second radius curves. If you do want to replace that with a correctly flanged wheel set, there is one provided in the pack for you. However, your model then will not be able to go around some of the tighter curves. So if you do have tight curves on your layout, stick with what's in there. But if you really want to make your locomotive that bit more authentic and your curves are a little bit more lenient, shall we say, you can swap that over very, very easily. That's available in there. That's exactly the same, by the way, with the optional steps and the cylinder drain taps too. It's great to fit them, but do bear in mind that they will foul if you're taking your locomotive through second radius curves, which out of the box they can do, but if you're putting some more of those details on, they will lose that capability. As you'd expect with Hornby, we've got a full instruction manual as well, not only giving recommendations and tips on the maintenance, but some really good guides on how to fit the extra detailing, the digital capacity in there as well which is an eight pin socket in the tender. And you've got a pre-included enclosure for a 28 millimeter digital sound speaker too. So if you really want to recreate the iconic four cylinder roar of one of these locomotives climbing some of the steep Cumbrian hills, you've got great space in the tender to add a digital sound decoder. And indeed, Hornby do do a digital TTS sound decoder if you're looking to add sound for a great price. Again, more details on that are in the description. With the streamlined coronations, you get a slightly different detail pack. You get everything I've just mentioned, but also a replacement front bogey as well. That again is to allow the model to have more of an authentic bogey with the actual size wheels. The wheel size on the models as delivered is compromised a little bit to let them go around second radius curves. But if you are operating a layout with more lenient curves, it's a really easy job to replace that front bogey with the accurately sized wheels, but it will foul some of the tighter curves on your layout. And again, there is a separate instruction manual there, different than the one for the, shall we say, the unstreamlined Princess Coronations with details specifically for just the, just the streamlined designs. James, they're saying these were the most powerful steam locos to run in Britain. They certainly were when they were introduced. And the models themselves are really powerful as well. We've had one of them on our test track with a rake of quite a few coaches. If I remember rightly, we had it on about 11 or 12 and absolutely no issues. As per the real locomotives, you've got a five pole motor in the front there. You've got a lot of die cast weight in there too. You've got pickups on every single wheel. So you won't have any issue with electrical contact in there. You've got the full works. You've got a lot of separately fitted details. I'll just pull up City of Salford again for you so you can really see some of the extra fittings. You've got the separate lamp brackets. You've got the separate handrails, the full valve gear too for these locomotives, all of which is working. You've got a selection of pipework underneath the frame there. You've got the lubricators along the side. Just bringing it round again, you've got the full flush glazing, including the glass deflectors. You've got the posable cab doors. And you'll just see the, the wire coming off the bottom is the electrical connection, which connects the loco to the tender for the digital socket and the, and the speaker in there too. So if you check out that link in the description, we've got the information on the prices there. All the information is available. They start at £139, these particular locomotives, which is a bargain price to get, which is the biggest LMS locomotive there ever was, especially off the express passenger style onto your layout. The five locomotives you see here are deliveries that are currently available with City of Salford and Coronation being the 2020 releases. But there has been more in the past too. Hornby brought this model out in 2017 and some of the models, including City of Birmingham and Sir William Sanier in the BR Maroon livery have already been and gone. But do keep an eye on our pre-owned collection as they do come up from time to time. And no doubt there's more 
models that are coming through in the future. But for me, this shows where Hornby really gets its finesse. The big freight, sorry, not freight, the big express locomotive, although they were trialled on freight in 1964, so I was almost right there. But this is where Hornby excels on their big express locomotives, covering the major tooling differences and even some of the minor ones as well. I don't think many people will have expected the Ivert style Duchess to be produced, but it's certainly been a popular model in both the guises it's been released. If you are an LMS modeler from the 1930s right through to the London Midland region in the 1960s, you've got to have a Duchess as pride of place in your collection. It was the best the LMS got. It was a fantastic design that really brought the LMS back into the rivalry with the London North Eastern Railway, which was cut short, unfortunately, by the Second World War. But the streamlined case, the Coronation Scott working, the colours that weren't carried by any other members of the LMS fleet, including the Coronation Blue that we see here, it really did give them their own individual style that you just couldn't see anywhere else on the whole of the LMS. But of course, you can see it on your layout right now. These models are exactly how I got them out of the packet. You can see all the details here come with them. You've got a great selection of details if you do want to add a little bit more. And there's five distinct liveries here, which go right from the construction of the locomotives in 1937 to the withdrawal of the locomotives in 1964. If you're a modern image modeler, there's absolutely no issues there either. Both Duchess of Hamilton and Duchess of Sutherland have worked on the main line throughout the 1980s, 1990s, 2000s, 2010s. You've pretty much always got an excuse to run a Duchess on a rail tour on a modern layout. So if you're a fan of big engines, if you're a fan of LMS engines, and if you're a fan of just really nice models. Do take a look at that link in the description. The models are available right now for £139. We've got some great high detail photos on there so you can take a closer look. And of course, if there's any question I haven't answered in the stream, sorry I couldn't get round to all of them, but there's some great questions coming through as always. Do leave them in the comments. I'll try and answer them where I can or get in touch with our customer experience team who can give you more guidance on these models and any other models we have in stock. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. Hope you've learned a little bit more about these fantastic models that are available right now. Do click the link in the description for more information. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page for more great content like this. We'll be bringing you loco reviews. We'll be bringing you the latest model railway news as well. So do keep an eye on both of those channels and the website. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. Hope you've liked the look of the Duchess and I'll see you again soon. Take care.